Okay. Um, okay, it's a good start. Okay, uh, today is the first day of Rosh Chodesh Elul. And uh, tomorrow is the first day because today it's a, it's a, the two days of Rosh Chodesh. So tomorrow is the first day of the month of Elul. And so the, I wanted to discuss about Elul, but more than just about Elul, I was thinking of discussing about the, quest, the connection between the Sedra, uh, the Haftorah, and the month of Elul. Now, all kinds of Ramazim, hints, indication. For Elul, as mentioned in the Mishnah Bura, in the Sifrei Kabbalah, in the Sifrei Musar. And the most famous is, of course, based on the Pasuk of Shira Shirim, Ani Dodi Vidodi Li. I am to my beloved, and my beloved is to me. And the take the Rashi Tevos, the first letter of each word, Ani is Aleph, Lidodi, to my beloved is Alamid, Vidodi above, and Li is Alamid. So it spells out Elo. Now, in a sense, this indicates, as I will explain, and as I have explained, that Elo is a, is a, a represents to a certain degree, the love relationship between God and the Jewish people, or you can call it the renewal of the love relationship between God and the Jewish people. Now I've mentioned many times this year also, the Pirka de Rav Kahana, that he tries to explain, to weave, the first pasuk of each of the Shiva de Nechemta, and first, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, God turns to the prophets and he says to the prophets, Nachmu, Nachmu Ami, console my people. But then the Jewish people reject the consolation and they say, Hashem. Zion rejects the consolation of the prophets. In a sense, according to the Medrash, why did he send prophets? Why didn't he console me himself? God has forgotten me. And then the prophets go back to God according to Medrash, and they say, The afflicted storm tossed is not consoled. The Jewish people is not consoled. So then God says, Anochi, Anochi, which is this week's Sedra, Anochi, Anochi, Humanachemchem, and is I, I, God, who, who is consoling you. And then the next two weeks, God continues his consolation. Rani Akaralo Yalada, sing out, barren one, you'll have more children than those who had children before. And Kumiori, Kivaorech, Arise, shine, for your light has arrived. Uh, and, and the glory of God has, has shown upon you. And then the Jewish people accept the consolation of God. And they say, so sosis Bashem, I will rejoice intentionally with God. Togel nafshi belokai, kibushani bigdeyesha milstaka yateni, he kachasan. Uh, uh, so he, 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 like a bridegroom who don't, don't's priestly glory, like a bride who bedecks herself in jewelry. In other words, it represents the fact that the Jewish people, in a sense, are in a marriage relationship with God. So what's the idea behind it? As I've always mentioned, that we have a double relationship with God. On one hand, we have, we say in Shemon Esri every day, we, we have a relationship with God based on the perception of God in the life of our ancestors. And 
But on the other hand, we have a relationship with God based on the perception of God in our own lives. And the Beis Hamikdash represented the personal relationship that existed with God. Well, also we mikdash is shachanti besocham. Let them make for me a mikdash, and I shall dwell in their midst. And Hakadosh Baruch Hu, why did Hakadosh Baruch Hu sort of say play his game and tell the navi go console them, only to have the Jewish people reject it, and then God says, "No, it is I who am consoling you," because God wanted to point out to the Jewish people where did their problem begin? When their problem began when they felt that it was enough to have a relationship with the God of their ancestors, not a personal relationship with God. Of course, the relationship with the God of your ancestors, of your teachers is very, very important. And at no point should one give it up. But equally as important is the personal relationship that the Jewish people have with God, that each individual Jew and the Jewish people as a whole have with God. And so th this is, and in Kehelis, uh, I mentioned always Kehelis, the Shlomo HaMelech uh, identifies himself as Kehelis ben David, Kehelis, the son of David. Why? Because what is, what is Kehelis about? Kehelis is about fear of God. Fear of God, that's the sum total of everything. Fear of God, that's something that's given over from father to son, from teacher to student, from leader to follower. And Yaakov Avinu refers to God as Pachad Avi Yitzchak, the fear of my father Isaac. So it's Kehelis Ben David, Kehelis the son of David, Mishlei, that's Divrei Musa, Divrei Tochacha, chastising, ethics. So Shma Bini Musa Avicha. Listen to the chastising of your son, of your father. And ethics, ethics of the father, that's something that's given over from father to son, from teacher to student. But Shirashirim, Asher Lishlomo, Shirashirim, only Shlomo's name is mentioned. Ben David isn't mentioned. Why? Because that's the love relationship. And in a love relationship, the personal relationship, that's between the person and God himself. And so God wanted the Jewish people to show that they wanted a personal relationship with them. And that's the Enochi, Enochi, Hu Menachem, Chem. This is the Haftorah that is always the first Haftorah of Chodesh Elo. So, so the, it, it, it's Anochi, it's me. It's not an intermediary. I have a personal relationship with you. Now, and, and how, does the, how does it conclude? The, the final of the Shiva de Nechemta, it concludes with So Sosis Pashem Pogel Nafshi Belokai. The Jewish people declaring that they 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 are they they are rejoice intensely with Hashem, and that they're like a bridegroom and like a kala. It talks of a love relationship that exists. So that's what Chodesh Elul is. Chodesh Elul is focusing on that personal love relationship that exists between God and the Jewish people. And that's the Anila Dodi Vidodi Li. I am to my beloved, and my beloved is to me. But it's strange that Elul, on one hand, is identified with the love relationship, as we said. But on the other hand, there's a sense of fear that overtakes or should overtake the Jew uh, on Elul. Uh, 
And it's, uh, the, there used to be a saying in Europe that when the owl comes, even the fish in the brook shiver. I don't think that the fish in the brook were really aware that it was Elo. But my sense is that the Jewish people were shaking and shivering so much because of the fear of the of the Yom Tovim that are coming, Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippurim, that because they were shaking so much, it appeared to them that everything else was shaking. So we have to understand if the focus is, is the love relationship. How is it that Elul is combined with this relationship of fear? Could understand it as awe, but why is the two put together? Now, another source mentioned, it's mentioned in the Mishnah I remember, and it's mentioned by others as well, Umbal Hashem for, the, for Elul, God shall circumcise your heart and the heart of your descendants. So, S is an Aleph, Levavcha, your heart is a Lamed, the S is above, Levav, the heart of your descendants, uh, also Lamed. So that's Elo. Now, the question is, how are we to understand it? Why, what's the significance? We understand, but what's the significance of adding Now, I think, now, regarding Matan Torah, the, met, the question all the Rishonim ask is that on one hand, we say that HaKadosh Baruch Hu took them, uh, took Har Sinai and hung it over them and said, in the Kabbalah, the Torah mutav, if you accept the Torah, it's figuratively, but nevertheless, it represents an attitude that if you accept the Torah, fine, but if not, there will be your burial. On the other hand, the, the Chazal, Praise the Jew in the highest terms that they said Nasa Benishma, that 600,000 Falachim came down from heaven and placed two crowns on the head of each Jew, one for Nasa and one for Nishma. I will listen and I will and I will do. I excuse me, I will do and I will listen. So the the uh so, so on the contrary, why are the Jews praised so much if there was this impact, this feeling of God holding a mountain over their heads and that it was, that, that, that the, 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 the God was holding the mountain over their heads and if they, if they had no choice but to accept the Torah. But... I, I once heard an answer from my father. Later on, I heard the same answer from others that originally the Jewish people said Nasa Benishma very willingly when God offered them the Torah. But there's a Medrash. The Medrash says, God said, when the Jewish people accept the Torah, I want a surety. And the Jewish people offered the Yavos, the patriarchs, as a surety. And God rejected that. And then God, then, then the Jewish people said that they're offering their children and that God accepted. Willingly, the Jewish people accepted the Torah for themselves. But they were not so enthusiastic, perhaps, about compelling future generations to Torah. And for that, HaKadosh Baruch had to be Kofa Leim Harkagigis. My father would mention, I don't remember if it was the name of the Meshachachma or not, Shamtahek Furaschem, there will your burial be. 
It didn't say po to hate for us. But in other words, the future generations that do not comply with the Torah. So they, they will encounter great difficulties. Now, now the, the Medrash mentions, we, tomorrow we start blowing the shofar every morning. Why? Because Moshe Rabbeinu went up on Rosh Chodesh Shalom to get the second luchos. And they blew the shofar when he went up. Some say they blew the shofar every day as a reminder for the Jewish people not to build another Egel Hazav, not to build another golden calf. And because of this, during the month of El, which coincide with the days of the calendar that Moshe Rabbeinu went up to Har Sinai to receive the, land, the second Luchos, so we too blow the shofar every morning. Some say every evening as well. And the, the, the question is, how did the blowing of the shofar prevent the Jewish people from building a new golden calf? But I've mentioned very often the question about Ilu uh, Kirvanu, we say in the Haggadah, Ilu Kirvanu Lefnei Har Sinai, Velona Samana Torah, that God brought us close at Mount Sinai but, and didn't give us the Torah, the Yenu. So the question is very famous. What would have been the, what would have been achieved just by coming close to Mount Sinai and not receiving the Torah? So I said, Ilu Kirvanu Lefnei Har Sinai, if God would have brought us Kervanu brought us close to himself because at Mount Sinai, in addition to receiving the Torah, there was revelation. The Jewish people sensed the presence of God in a very close manner. That in itself was a great accomplishment. The problem, why did the Jewish people build the golden calf? Because when we have both the experience of Sinai, my father used to say, you have the experience of Sinai and you have the Torah of Sinai. And we have to perpetuate both the experience of Sinai and the Torah of Sinai. And I think the Jewish people, were, what was the experience of Sinai? The experience of Sinai was sensing the presence of God at Sinai and revelation. And, and we, we, we uh, so when we, when we do tshuva, so, so, so the Jewish people, how did the Jewish people come to build a golden calf? They were only able to see the sense, the presence of God. So long as Moshe Rabbeinu was there, it was the God of Moshe. They didn't, somehow there was something wrong with that personal relationship. They might have had it momentarily, but they weren't able to perpetuate it. It's not enough to perpetuate the Torah of Sinai. We have to perpetuate the experience of Sinai as well. And if we do not perpetuate the experience of Sinai, of sensing the presence of God, and ultimately, we will not perpetuate the Torah of Sinai either. When the, the, the Nusach of Vidui, Ana Hashem, Chatosi, Yavisi, Pashati, Lefanecha, God, I sinned before you. How did I come to sin? I may believe that you weren't there. But if the Jew senses the presence of God, then he can't come to sin. So the purpose and how did God make his presence known at Mount Sinai? Uve kol shofar hafata, with the sound of the shofar, you made your presence known. So the Jewish people, when Moshe Rabbeinu went up to Har Sinai, in order, in, in, in order that they should remember that they had an obligation, not only of perpetuating the Torah of Sinai, 
But the experience of Sinai also, they blow the shofar, and according to some, every day they blew the shofar. Because the blowing of the shofar reminded them of God making his presence known to them. Now, that's the reason. That, 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 uh, so, in other words, the, so what is the idea of tshuva? What is tshuva? As we prepare ourselves for Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur for the Sarah Shimei tshuva, it's not just to rid ourselves of the Avera that we did, of the sin that we did. It's much more than that. It's the reacceptance of Torah. We have to re-undergo the Sinai experience. And to a certain degree, Rosh Hashanah, which is focuses on the blowing of the shofar, that's dedicated to the experience of Sinai. And Yom HaKippur, when we say the Bidoy, that's dedicated primarily, although both are dedicated to both, dedicated to the reacceptance of the Torah of Sinai. So we have to, the idea of tshuva, certainly in the Yom Narayim, and certainly in Elul when we prepare ourselves for the Yom Narayim, for the days of awe, is in a sense to re-accept the Torah, to re-undergo the experience of Sinai. At Sinai, on one hand, the Jews came closer to God. But the Chazal tell us, the Medrash tells us that when they heard the voice of God, they were overcome with such fear. They were overcome with such fear that the Jewish people, they had to be revived and they, they went back long distances. So on one hand, they were going forward. On the other hand, because of the fear, they were going backwards. And to a certain great degree, Elul, which is preparation for these days of tshuva, we have to re-undergo the same experience of Mantara. On one hand, it's Anila Dodi, the Dodi Li. I am to my beloved, my beloved is to me. I come close to God. But at the same time, they have to have that feeling of awe. Sometimes, as a result of coming close, we lose the awe that we're supposed to have. So the, 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 the giving of Matan Torah was a combination of coming close and moving back. And in Ella, we have to do both also. Now, this week's Parsha Shoftim, Torah tells us that if there will be a question in Halacha, uh, so you'll go up to the base of Mikdash, you go up to the base of Mikdash to, to the Shofet, Shia by Yom Mahang, it means the best in Haggadol, to the high courts of Israel, and you cannot deviate neither left nor right from what the high court of Israel decided. And the halacha is, and this is also mentioned between Yisrael and Parshish Mishpatim, that El Mishpatim is mentioned near the building of the Mizbeach to tell us that Bezdin Haggadol has to sit in the, in the, in the base Hamikdash. And I, I, I always mention it's really two halachas. On one hand, there is something lacking with the best in Haggadol if they're not in the base of Mikdash. They lose part of their status. And on the other hand, the base of Mikdash is lacking something if the best in Haggadol isn't there. And why is that? Because as I mentioned always, the Ramban says that HaKadosh Baruch Hu, uh, why is, 
the Mishkan mentioned the Chumash Maus, it should have been mentioned in Chumash Vayikra. But the purpose of the Mishkan was to transfer the Dush of Harsinai, the Dush of the Sanctity of Harsinai. The, the Sanctity of Harsinai is the presence of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, and bring it to the base HaMikdash. Why? Because the base HaMikdash is the perpetuation of Sinai. So in a sense, I, the Parsha Shoftan, which talks, which talks about the Beis Hamikdash, that's talking, that's talking also about the Jewish people coming. It, 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 it's, it's talking about perpetuating Matan Torah. Consequently, Parsha Shoftan and Anochi Anochi Hu Menachem Chem Behav Torah. And I leave the Dodi, the Dodi leave. That all has a common denominator. The common denominator is the perpetuation of Matan Torah, not just the perpetuation of the Torah itself, but the per per perpetuation of the experience of sensing the presence of Hakadosh Baruch Hu, of Anochi Anochi Ani Dodi, and the idea of the awe of Hakadosh Baruch Hu. And I just want to add one more thing. I mentioned that the, when the Torah, when HaKadosh Baruch Hu said that, that he, that I mentioned my father's explanation that he offered the Jewish people of Torah, they readily said Nasa and Ishma. But when, only, when it was figuratively Kofa Aleyam Harkigigis, that's when they accepted to a certain degree to commit their children to the Torah. In other words, Jewish people always want to accept Torah. And I think that to a certain degree, the Jewish people always want to do tshuva and to re-accept the Torah. But there are some limitations on that. There are some limitations, and those limitations are the the because we don't want to we don't want to to compel our future generations. We want them to make the choice themselves. Or there are other things. Other, other medrashim, there are medrashim that say that the Jewish people initially wanted to accept the Torah Shabbat Sab and did not want to accept the oral tradition. Everybody has their own thing that's problematic. But we have to realize that when we do tshuva, it has to be coupled with one hand with the Nasa Vanishma, with enthusiasm, Vanila Dodi, the Dodi Lee. But on the other hand, we have to understand that doing Shiva like Matan Torah has to be coupled with the idea of Kafa Leim Harkigigis. We have to do Shiva the way HaKadosh Baruch Hu wants us to do Shiva, not the way we want to do Shiva. Today, we live in a generation that in a sense, they're not, they're, they're not trying to not identify with Torah. They are trying to identify with Torah, but they're trying to redo the Torah. They want it to be comfortable. They want the Torah to be what they readily want to say, Nasa Benishma to. So we have to know that when we do tshuva, it has to be with kafa leim harkigigis also, to have the fear of Hakadosh Baruch Hu, the awe of Hakadosh Baruch Hu, coupled together with the love of Hakadosh Baruch Hu. Okay. Anyone has any questions? Please put them in the chat.